boy, oh boy. It has been a night, people. <sighs> you know, you know, I I have done this this show by myself for a very long time. But even then, it it still doesn't feel like I've been doing it long enough. We had a lot of uh, technical glitches and stuff. This this is what happens sometimes. Take the good with the bad. Now we got the uh, the music going. We're gonna get pumped up here. Draw ourselves some uh, some Terry tunes characters. Starting with my personal favorite, Oil Can Harry. If you have any questions, there's a call-in number below, and uh, I am nervously uh, checking my tablet screen like every three seconds just to make sure it hasn't farted again. Oh boy. Give me a second. Okay, I feel much better now. All right. Now, I've drawn uh, Oil Can Harry before. I've drawn him uh, recently. He's a pretty awesome character, I gotta say. <sighs> and of all the Terry Toons characters that I have drawn, which hasn't been a lot, even for a show like mine where I tend to try to focus on the more obscure stuff. The Terry Toons have been uh, woefully underrepresented. And I mean, it's not like, you know, they're the greatest cartoons ever made because they're... Well, you know, I mean, there's there's good Terry Toons, there's bad Terry Toons, there's sloppy Terry Toons. I mean, it's like any other studio. You know, they uh, they were around for quite a while. You know, they had their uh, their strengths, weaknesses, and um, the in between. Now I gotta figure out a pose. I want the uh, the old boy to do so. I'm turning to this this book that I have that I pulled out of the garage called Colossal Collection of Action Poses. Okay. I found one that I kind of like. And you might be thinking, Rich, we voted for Mighty Mouse, Heckle and Jekyll, and uh, Deputy Dog. Why the hell are you drawing Oil Can Harry? And my answer is simple. For revenge. Uh, anytime that I've had a villains episode, I've put... Uh, I put Harry in there, hoping people would, uh, you know, see him and be like, oh, you know, I mean, that character kind of looks cool. 
but each time I did that, nobody went for him. And I mean, I like to think that Dresden Dross is a democracy, but it's not! Of course, I kid, I love you guys, I hope you're all staying safe, but because you didn't vote for this character, he's getting drawn on this episode tonight no matter what. I actually have a uh, pre-existing uh, drawing that I did of uh, OCH, but um, I won't be uh, pulling that up at the moment only because we, we started very, very late. Because the, uh, the tablet monitor that I use uh, was having some problems. The, uh, the tablet wasn't recognized by my computer. And when that happens, This is, this is what my lines look like. When the tablet is recognized. Oh, look at that. Isn't that so much nicer? I know it is. That was just a, uh, a warm-up sketch. So if anyone wants to uh, call in and talk Terry tunes, uh, you're more than welcome to. More than welcome to uh, ask uh, viewers questions, um, share your uh, Terry tunes uh, insight. For those of us who are woefully under uh, unfamiliar with the um, with the term Terry tunes and uh, what it means and why it's, uh, why they're even worth talking about. Because I think they are. You know, because some of them are kind of cool. <laughs> Especially the, uh, the Mighty Mouse cartoons. Like, I mean, those, those are a real treat. Mainly the ones with uh, Oil Can Harry and uh, Pearl Pureheart. I mean, the others, the, the pre-Harry uh, Mighty Mouse cartoons, I mean, they're, they're okay, but I mean, they're nothing really to write home about, in, in my personal opinion. Now, some of you might feel differently. You know, be like, oh, what about Super Mouse, you know? Oh, what about Wolf Wolf? Oh, what about uh, Gypsy Life? Those are all good cartoons, but uh, they don't really come to uh, my mind when uh, when I think of uh, Mighty Mouse or any of that. I got you in me power. I mean, of all the uh, characters in Terry Toons, I I'd say by far Harry is uh, one of the most interesting and uh, well-developed uh, characters. That's not to say that Mighty Mouse isn't. He's, uh, he's a pretty good character. I mean, bland to an extent, but, uh, but otherwise, you know, a fun character to watch. But I think that is definitely due in large part to, uh, to Harry.
and his uh, shenanigans, which are very flamboyant and over the top, where he puts Pearl Pureheart, who's a, uh, a lady mouse, in some pretty dire situations, only because, I guess, he kind of likes to uh, torture people. And, I mean, we don't like torture. Torture is bad. We're gonna have Harry with a uh, with a sword because why not? Everyone loves swords because nobody wants to call in. Might need a new keyboard soon because some of the keys on this one seem to be a tad unresponsive. Like I said, tech happens. Pretty sure that 95% of you would not draw a sword this way, but quite honestly, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So if you think this sword looks off to you in any way, you draw it.
Harry's got an outfit that sort of reminds me of um, the outfit that uh, Billy Porter wore to the uh, to the Emmys. You know, and and that just kind of made me smile because I'm just like, Billy Porter is awesome because he's channeling Oil Can Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if that was his intention, but, you know, it just kind of struck me as, uh, as really cool. Some of you may feel differently, but, you know, whatever. Keep your negative opinions to yourself. I think all things considered especially the, uh, the awful pandemic. It is a very uh, wonderful uh, era to be a human being. Where no matter what walk of life you come from, no matter what your culture, no matter who um, you uh, fall in love with, huh. Interesting. Oh no, the camera's there. A little hurt. The girl can get this for me for Valentine's Day. I'm playing with my eating. Still good. I mean, it's chocolate. It'd be real here. about Billy Porter. I, I just I just think he's really cool. So if anyone wants to uh, chime in and educate me more on uh, Billy Porter and um, and all that by all means, tell me what I don't know. Tell me what I don't know about Terry Tunes. Okay, I'm gonna minimize this. This could be a long episode, folks. one guy on earth that could draw oil can Harry better than most is a fella by the name of Jim Tyre. Now Jim Tyre was an American animator who uh, bounced around from studio to studio but um, he was very well known for uh, his very flamboyant uh, animation acting I mean, some people will tell you that, uh, you know, a Jim Tyre scene is like some of the wildest stuff you'd ever see in animation, which, you know, I, from what I've seen, I would tend to agree. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the closest you're going to get to uh, Jim's uh, zaniness is probably um, an Izzy Ellis or... A Rod Scribner, in particular uh, Rod Scribner, who was best known as a uh, Warner Brothers animator on the uh, the Looney Tunes series, particularly on the um, the films directed by Bob Clampett. But getting back to uh, Jim Tyre, uh, he was a uh, comic strip artist 
for a number of years. Uh, he also moonlighted in comics when um, there wasn't any animation work for him, which is kind of insane because there always seemed to be something for him to uh, to do, except when there was a uh, a labor shortage in World War II, and at least at Technicolor anyway. So Thad Komarowski, if you're watching this and uh, and I'm still live by this point, feel free to call the number on your screen and correct me because you know way more about this crap than I do. <laughs> One of the references that I'm using for uh, drawing Harry is a page from a Mighty Mouse comic book that was actually drawn by Jim Tyre. Uh, Mighty Mouse, I think this is Mighty Mouse, no. It looks like Mighty Mouse uh, number 22, uh, released in, I want to say 1953? I think they were published, the Mighty Mouse book by, uh, by St. John was published uh, bi-monthly, that's every two months. For those of you who, like me, struggle with math. So it had to be like 1954, this particular comic was published. I mean, Jim definitely got Harry. Harry was, you know, a great um, character for him to uh, experiment with. And one of the things that I appreciated about the Mighty Mouse cartoons, you know, with the Here I come to save the day, is that there's a little bit of opera to it, which is totally absurd, but it works. Uh, so much so that um, when my best friend and uh, animation partner Kevin Lasani and I were uh, working on the high school drama show, I had at that point very recently seen the, uh, the Mighty Mouse cartoons for the first time in like 20 years and I said to him, oh dude, we gotta do this, watch this. So I showed him, you know, a few scenes from uh, some Mighty Mouse cartoons. I'm like, dude, this is hysterical. We gotta use this. But, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something like this. I mean, even if nobody gets it, I, I think it's it's hysterical to have, you know, a superhero and a supervillain and a uh, damsel in distress all singing opera. It's so stupid, but it works. If you don't believe me, uh, check out the following Mighty Mouse cartoons. Love's Labor 1, uh, Stop, Look, Listen, Triple Trouble, and uh, When Mousehood Was in Flower, among others. They're on YouTube. Normally, I would be uh, hesitant about, you know, telling you to uh, watch stuff on YouTube that kind of shouldn't be on YouTube, but it would be nice if uh, Viacom, you know, just kind of wised up to the fact that they're not going to do anything with the freaking Terry Tunes library and just sell it to uh, some kind of entity that's actually going to do something with them and uh, put them on a streaming service or release them on uh, a DVD collection or sell them to Warner Brothers where they'll uh, add them to the uh, Warner Archive collection.
Warner Archive always has uh, something interesting going on. They've definitely uh, learned their lesson from the, uh, the Porky Pig set. Porky Pig 101. I mean, it's not a bad set, but it's not a great one. There were things on there that were overlooked, and it's unfortunate, but the set's already done, so not a lot can really be done about it. That doesn't look very much like a knee. That looks like something else. gentleman you might want to follow who has at least he gives the impression he has a uh, great respect and admiration for uh, the Terry Tunes on the whole is uh, cartoonist Milton Knight like almost every single day that he and I have been uh, Facebook friends he, uh, he shares on his page um some uh, Terry Toons cartoons that either he has uploaded and uh, I believe has the uh, the rights to or that <laughs> he uh, he he quotes from Let's get a uh, color reference. There's a page I was talking about. Very simple stuff, but considering whatever deadlines he might have been under, Thank you. 
Mighty Mouse was revived along with um, many other uh, Terry Toons notables such as Heckle and Jekyll who are going to be drawn on this episode in the late 1970s by Filmation. And uh, the results are kind of a mixed bag but, well, you know, it's when, when we're talking about uh, Filmation, you should know going into it that uh, that it's gonna be a mixed bag. <laughs> Especially in quality, I mean, let's be real. Now, to be fair, Filmation did some good stuff. But they also did crap. Specifically, uh, Sport Billy. Um, it's one particular episode of uh, Groovy Ghoulies, which um, which had uh, Looney Tunes characters guest starring in it. Um, Jerry Beck uh, had told me about this a few years back. I don't know if he was planning on putting it in um, his worst cartoons ever show or whatever, but he was describing it, and I'm not I'm not one to share Jerry's opinions. If you want to know, then ask Jerry yourself. But um, somehow, I, I, a friend of mine at the time had asked him a question about something, and then he started talking about um, how. Uh, Looney Tunes were sublicensed to Filmation for an episode of uh, the show called The Groovy Ghoulies, which is a cute show, but this episode with the, uh, the Looney Tunes characters was just way off. I mean, Mel Blanc was doing the voices for many of the characters, but it, it, was, it was just such a big miss. Alright, now we're on to uh, Mighty Mass, finally. 40 minutes later. There was a new uh, Mighty Mouse comic book that came out not too long ago. I don't recommend it. I mean, as soon as I heard about it, I wanted to check it out. And then when I did, I was just like, you know, I feel like if this book gets cancelled, which I think it did. 
You know, I'd want to make a, uh, a pitch to someone like, I don't know, American Mythology. You know, being like, alright, hey, this is Mighty Mouse. Now, let's try to get the rights. <laughs> Real heroes wear underpants. Oh no, excuse me. Underpants. Yeah, I got that out of my system. My girlfriend and I have been binge-watching uh, Boy Meets World. And, uh, I swear, that stupid scene gets me every time. This is one reason why Lucky Zilla doesn't have a cape. <sighs> if you've seen The Incredibles, and you know about uh, Edna's little uh, capes speech. No capes! But, unfortunately, Mighty Mouse Gotta have a cape. Mighty Mouse was created in 1942 as Super Mouse. As such, he had a Superman uh, color scheme for the first couple of years that uh, they, would, they were uh, doing the shorts. I don't know for a fact if uh, DC sued, but uh, they definitely put some pressure on... Uh, on Paul Terry. To rename the character, or as it's more commonly known, cease and desist. model sheet that I have here shows Mighty Mouse with eyelashes. Interestingly enough. Uh-uh, we're not 
not doing that again. That's right. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Like, really? Sorry, epidemic sound. I'm not paying 15 bucks a month so you can put uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star into my playlist. Nah, I don't think so. Some of you who uh, grew up in the 80s might remember a uh, Mighty Mouse cartoon that was brand new at the time. Uh, so this would be 1987. Which was produced and some episodes directed by the great Ralph Bakshi. At least until I saw Last Days of Coney Island, and I'm sorry, Ralph, I love you, but that film, I don't know what you were thinking. But enough of my silly opinions. The uh, Bakshi produced uh, Mighty Mouse cartoon was fantastic. I remember when it originally aired, and uh, the episode I remember watching at all of two years old was the infamous cocaine episode. Now, it wasn't actual cocaine that a uh, particular character who will remain nameless was snorting, but um, some network sensors uh, made us think about it. And one of the show's uh, directors was fired. And rightfully so. I won't mention his name. But if you know anything about uh, cartoons, probably have heard of this guy. I'm glad I don't know him personally. But other than that, the, uh, the Mighty Mouse, the Mighty Mouse The New Adventures is the uh, appropriate title. Fantastic show. Couldn't recommend it more highly. Teenagers and young adults will get the jokes. Uh, little kids won't. I know at the time when it was on, I didn't get any of the jokes. I'm just like, oh, Mighty Mouse, you yeah, come to save the day and all that. That garbage. <laughs> episodes produced. It lasted uh, two seasons until um, I think it was CBS. Yeah. It might have been CBS, but uh, they ended up uh, pulling the plug.
but you know, nothing, nothing lasts forever. I know one day I'm not gonna make uh, Lucky Zilla comics anymore. But for what it was, that uh, that show was uh, really something special. Personal favorite episodes is one in which Mighty Mouse isn't even the star. It's called Night of the Bat Bat. It's Batman, but he's an actual bat. <laughs> one of the best gags in the thing was Bat Bat takes off his mask and it's still the same face. ago, actually, now that I recall. It was the Archie episode. I was gonna... I, I drew uh, Jughead and Betty, and I was gonna draw Veronica, but then I bailed because I was really tired. I'm not doing that this time. draw Mighty Mouse. Well, I actually haven't seen him in person draw Mighty Mouse, but uh, he did a variant cover for the, uh, the new Mighty Mouse comic that came out a few years ago. Unfortunately, that's not enough to convince me to uh, invest money to, uh, to get that book, because the book is garbage. I'm sorry, Neil. I love you, but... <sighs> If I get my Mighty Mouse book off the ground, if there's even one to get off the ground, I'll commission you for a cover. There we go. Okay. I think we'll draw Deputy Dog next. to my trusty book, Poses to Draw. Thank you. 
I was thinking about doing a uh, a Dirty Harry poster, but substituting uh, Deputy Dog for uh, Clint Eastwood. I think I'm still gonna do that, just not right here.
not seen a deputy dog cartoon. I've seen bits and pieces, but uh, not a full uh, beginning to end uh, short. I think you're getting your all-nighter, but, uh, unless you were here earlier, or in the room here, when, uh, I was having my, uh, my technical challenges. Yeah. Those were not fun. Hi, Crystal. I haven't seen you in a few weeks on here. Hope you're doing well. Hope everything's going fine. Especially all things considered. Or some days I wonder if even I'm doing fine. Fullest? Oh boy, I hope so. Hey, you know, everyone has an off day. See, only have two toes. Let's try. Something wrong here. <laughs> shared in my streaming. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that greatly. Uh, yes, I stream using uh, OBS. Um, as long as I have a reliable uh, internet connection, it's it's great. I, I've had very few problems with, uh, with OBS. All of my problems seem to come from Facebook, uh, my tablet's drivers, and... Uh, Occasionally, my internet connection. Or sometimes, lack thereof. Thankfully, not recently. My girlfriend's dad is an engineer. And uh, so far as I know, he did uh, a lot of the, uh, the wiring in the house so that... Uh, this way we experience uninterrupted connection, which is good. Ever thought about setting up personal notifications? I, uh... I do. The problem is I've, I've had uh, a love-hate relationship with Facebook over the years. And I mean, I, I, maybe, maybe what you, you're asking is, uh, is, is there a way to do it in OBS? Not as far as I know. But uh, if I come across something in my OBS learnings, I will certainly share it. I'ma try that 
Street yard I keep hearing about. Oh, let me know how that goes. I'm I'm curious. Seemed like so far, Whale Can Harry was the most complicated uh, character to draw, but Deputy Dog is like fairly easy. <laughs> Mighty Mouse was fairly easy. What happened? On that good. There we go. Oh, we got uh, stream labs. Um, only on my uh, my Facebook page itself. Like I said, with uh, with the. The social platforms and everything, I have a love-hate relationship with them. But I guess, in a way, so do we all. I mean, sometimes the notifications come through, and we're like, Hey, yeah, that's great. Everything got shared, and everyone is happy. And then, some days, you just want to take a bet to it. But like I said earlier, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Uh, this is Adobe Illustrator that I'm drawing in. I love Illustrator because I can scale items without losing quality. I mean, I'll scale this guy. Now, I'll scale him back up. I'll blow him up into uh, fine detail. Not a single loss of quality. That's, uh, that's vector art for you. Alright. Gotta put my signature on here. Bites, books sold, or new followers during an after. I had a few new followers. Um, I actually had uh, sold a, uh, a lucky book before MCon. The, uh, the newest one, Lucky Zilla number 16. It's the newest for now. <laughs> um, sometime within the next week, I'm going to have uh, the pre order up for uh, Lucky Zilla number 17. Let me just, uh, you know, while we're at it, no one's calling it. That's fine. I'm disabling it for the night. <laughs> Give me a second. Let's see if one of the cats wants to come in.
Krita. I have heard of uh, Krita. Come here, baby girl. Pretty kitty. Oh, we have a cat here. This is intern Bella. AKA Squishy. We call her Squishy because she's squishy. Bella, are you squishy? The squishiest. Yes. sister was hanging out here earlier. <sighs> Cats are good. <sighs> we just kind of sort of needed that intermission. Let's look at uh, Deputy Dog. And now we're going to move on to our final uh, drawings of the evening, which are One Heckle and Jekyll. Admittedly, I do not know which one is Heckle and which one is Jekyll, but. Being the owner of Lucky Zilla, I always saw you being a dog person. Well, I've always been a dog person. Um, it's because of uh, the dog that I had growing up that I ended up creating. Zilla. Um, I have considered a, uh, a female Lucky Zilla. Um, I'm not spilling any more information right now about that, but it is a there is a very distinct possibility of that. Like I said, more on that as it develops. And uh, I wouldn't do a cat version, just because I don't think it would really fit. I mean, quite honestly, I don't even want to do like um, a Lucky Zilla doppelganger <clears throat> or a uh, robot Lucky Zilla, even though I kind of did as a. Uh, as a parody in one strip but <sighs> yeah I, I better shut up right now about uh, some of the lucky Zilla material that I might leak
cat. Top three animals? No, no, I mean, if there's gonna be a female Lucky Zilla, um, it's gonna be a, uh, a wolf-like creature, same as Lucky Zilla. and three fingers. I, I just, I don't understand it. For an original character, not necessarily that. Huh? Well, until I um, co-created uh, Quackery with my friend Ed Giasson, um, I had always wanted to do one that was a duck, and uh, there was a uh, it was concept art of a um, of a samurai duck character around 2011. Rabbits, yeah. I don't know. Being that a, a bulk of the uh, characters in Lucky are human, it's, uh, it's really tough for me to say. Destiny's watching. She's very upset. It's like Bella's in my spot. Too bad. Alright. Well, let's ink these dudes and get on with my life. a Nickelodeon um, pilot that was made with uh, Heckle and Jekyll as the stars I think around 1998 it was kind of to try to revive the uh, the Terry Toons brand again 
I saw it a few weeks ago. And I gotta tell you, almost every single time I hear a handful of people um, clamoring for, oh, bring this back, or bring back, we need to bring back, and I'm, I'm just like, no, no we don't. We don't need to bring back anything. There's, there are several reasons why things ceased to be. Some of it's economical, some of it is just, it ran its course. And that's kind of how I feel about reboots. Before I start uh, sounding like a grumpy old man, I've seen my share of reboots, both good and bad. And I try to keep my opinions to myself as to uh, what I think are good and bad because, I don't know, I, I, don't, I might have a friend who works on one of those shows and I don't want to badmouth them and end up hurting the show for those who find enjoyment out of it. Now some people will just say anything regardless because that's that's just their livelihood. And I don't really get down with that. Quite honestly. If I don't like something, I just say to myself, yeah, I don't like this, and move on. I, I, I'm 35 years old. I don't have time for negativity. Curbside, don't waste your time on that. It's on YouTube. If you want to see it, go right ahead. I won't stop you. Heckle and Jekyll remind you. Heckle and Jekyll want to remind you to drink responsibly.
I mean, I can tell you, Kelly, that uh, one animal that I try to stay away from when creating new characters is cats. Only because there are so many cat characters, it's ridiculous. This isn't the first time that I've drawn Heckle and Jekyll. It was maybe ten years ago in my parents' basement. Somebody posted something and I was just like, um, I should draw those characters. So I did. Squishy. Third one's up here. <sighs> yeah. I'm gonna stick. 
stare at that for a minute. This is a first. What are you doing, big boy? Psst, psst, psst. Meow. Let's see. You see a big boy cat? Boston. He wants to go outside. But it's a little too late for him to go. It's a little too late for him to go outside, so he's uh, he's beefing. So anyways, I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, Terry Tunes edition of Dresden Draws. It's a miracle we got through this considering that uh, we started off the evening on a very, very, very wrong foot. <sighs> That's what happens when, um, you know, you do things by yourself. Occasionally you have to account for um, some, uh, some slip-ups. So, I'm going to let you guys go as... I continue to uh, sit here and pet Squishy. Um, I wasn't able to share my buddy Tommy Stathis's, uh Cartoon Carnival trailer. That might have been one of the reasons why my technology kind of pooped. You know, I'm going to try sharing it. Anyway, on YouTube, the episode is going to end right about now, but the Facebook version, we're going to see this trailer. So, 